Uh, is my is Miles in? I just got in. Miles in. Okay. All right. Thank you, everybody. We're going to restart this meeting, the PVC, Tuesday, August 17th. We are on the Public Safety Complex Fire Station number two update agenda item. I will turn it over to you, Ken. And let me get it back up here. All right. There we go. Okay. All right, the schedule update uh, in phase two at the public safety building, the exterior waterproofing is complete. The brick is uh, uh, mostly complete. Uh, electrical wire is being installed uh, throughout. MEP is ongoing throughout. Uh, roof work, remember I wrote this a week and a half ago, so a lot of things have happened since, since then. Um, roof work is uh, complete except for the cap sheet and they've been doing that the past week. Uh, deck work and the rough in is mostly done. Window work continues over at Fire Station 2. The MEP work is ongoing throughout. They started deliveries and in, in installation of the mill work. The curtain wall windows are mostly complete or were <coughs> a week and a half ago. Ceiling grids mostly complete and we're still on track for substantial completion of Fire Station 2 in that October, November timeframe and January, February for PD. Anybody have any questions on the schedule? I had a question on installation of the millwork. Yes, sir. I, the question is, uh, how are you controlling the uh, humidity in both facilities? Oh no, you're only installing millwork at fire station. At fire, at fire station two and we're, and we're, uh, we're enclosed. So they've got uh, dehumidifiers in there if they need it. Um, and Are you uh, checking the, humidity. The the con the, con the there, are, there are temporary there are temporary doors to get into the second floor. That's where the millwork is. Um, we have yeah we have dehumidifiers. We have fans and we have we're monitoring the humidity throughout the whole building on all three levels. Okay, good. All right. Anything else? All right, ACL, you'll notice that the ACL is very small this month. Uh, the only thing, uh, really nothing, nothing new on there uh, from what we've, uh, we've seen before. Uh, we cleaned it up this month and most everything went in. There's been a few since then, obviously, but uh, this was done a week and a half ago. So um, everything else is in the change order, which we'll, uh, we'll talk about in a bit. So any, any questions with the uh, ACL? Just if we could review the budget, if you want to do that post. Um, um, yeah, yeah. We, actually, Stuart, we're we're better than we were than we were last month. Um, okay. In terms of breakdown, just a quick review of. We don't have the uh, budget. Do we have the budget sheet here? Yeah, it's coming up. I have trouble flipping it, so if you don't mind. Uh, reading it sideways. Um, we have, uh, after the ACL, we have 533, almost 534,000 with less than six months to go. Okay. So we're, uh, we're well within our- uh, Right, so um, the burn rate has come way down. Yes, sir. Okay. Even, with, even, even with the, the, the one this month. Excellent. Any questions in the financial before we go to the change order and the approvals? Yep. Sure, I'll, I'll just let you know that Dennis is on the phone listening and I think he can talk. So, um, yes, I'm here. I don't know if you can hear me. Okay, great. Thanks, Dennis. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, so, can, so we'll go to the change order first, Ken. Okay. Uh, this month's change order is a little over 69,000. Uh, the big number on here we talked about last month, which is the infill panels on stair two. Uh, the other uh, large, large number is the 11,000 for restoring the traffic loop at the PD. This was required. This is out in Chestnut Street in order to make the tie in for the uh, sewer line for phase two. Uh, they had to cut through the traffic loops out in Chestnut Street. So this is to uh, restore those and uh, put those back in uh, in working order. Um, 
the rest of the stuff on there is under the 10 gram, but if anyone has any questions on them, I'll be happy to review them. Yes, I you can see we got rid of the slide poll. So we've got a credit there for the install um, of a little over, a little under 1200 bucks. Okay. I heard you, Erwin. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, you're right. It's under 10,000 by $34. I'm curious about the uh, oh, gas, gas the, pipe. The, the, uh, um, the original drawings showed the gas piping for the makeup air unit. Um, going to the wrong location. It was, it was mislabeled on the original drawings. So they had to reroute the gas piping to where the makeup air unit actually is on the roof. Okay. okay. Any other questions? And also folks that I can't see, just remember that if you have a question, put the hand up on the, on the lower panel here, you can electronically press the hand and it'll, it'll, I can see it. I, can see some people on my screen. Um, just a just clarification. Case. George? Uh, the question that I have is regarding the slide poll. Um, uh, Chief, are you, are you a bit, uh, there? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, George. Uh, what, what's, what was the reasoning for getting rid of that? I know we had some discussion of it at the last meeting. Um, I, I assume you were the one that made the decision not to have that? Correct. Um, it was, it, the reasoning was really twofold. One was it is, there was safety issues with it. And the second is um, to rectify those in any way aesthetically wouldn't have been good. Okay. So this is, I mean, you're, sufficiently able to respond quickly without any major disruption of that, without the slide poll, is what you're saying. Yeah, yes, we'll have to. Okay. Okay. I think, you know, the, the, the idea of the poll is a good one. Um, you know, it, it, it's, there's a big, a lot of tradition behind them. And uh, we would have loved to have it. Unfortunately, I think when we were thinking it would be in the stairwell, we were thinking more the way it was in the previous building. Um, and it's sort of, it was kind of being jammed into an area that it really looked like it would be unsafe. Um, if something were to go wrong, it could have catastrophically gone wrong. And, uh, the remedy was really to put like a screen there and that just wasn't right. You know, that well, wasn't so in essence, right. they have to, so in essence, they have to run down the stairs. Yeah. Yeah. Which doesn't present a problem to anybody. George. No, it, it, it no. no. Okay. That's okay. All. Thank you, George. Um, okay, I'm going to put forth the change order number 31 for $69,169 for approval. Do I hear a second? Second. Thank you, Erwin. Any questions for the vote? Hearing none, seeing none coming to the vote. Roll call. Richard? Aye. George? Aye. Lynn? Aye. Erwin? Aye. Chief Condon? Aye. Thank you. Okay. With that, we now have invoices to approve. Um, I'm going to go down Catherine's list and I'm going to uh, suggest that we put the Consigli, the KBA, and then we'll group the remaining invoices together. The first one is the Consigli construction. Requisition number 31 through July 2021 for $1,548,236.55 coming out of the general contracting budget. Do I hear a second? Second. Thank you, Richard. Any questions? Hearing none, seeing none coming to the vote. Richard? Aye. George? 
Aye. Lynn? Aye. Irwin? Aye. Chief Condon? Aye. And the chair is aye. And I believe I did not vote on the previous item, Catherine. I would do an aye if that's not out of order. Um, okay. Uh, the next invoice for approval, putting forth the Castle Booze KBA July 2021 services coming out of the architectural budget, $17,930.80. Do I hear a second? Seconded. Thank you, George. Any questions? Hearing none, seeing none coming to the vote. Richard? Aye. George? Aye. Lynn? Aye. Irwin? Aye. Chief Condon? Aye. Chair is aye. Okay. Um, we have 10 invoices, which seem to be this, this is a group of standard ones we get um, for various services. I will go down. They're all for the miscellaneous budget. Um, we have an invoice for Needham Fire Department, Fire Watch details, October the 7th through the 9th for 2020 for 4000 $78.80. We have another Needham Fire Department fire watch details from October 13th to the 16th on 2020 or in 2020, $5,438.40. We have a pod invoice for the rental uh, for $114.99. We have another pod for another rental box for $114.99. We have the Milton Cat generator rental for June through early July for $2,612.50. We have a second Milton Cat generator rental from July 12th through the early part of August for $2,612.50. We have the invoice for wrist frost shumway Shumway, excuse me, June 2021 commissioning for Fire Station 2, $2,372. The next is Wrist Frost Shumway for July 2021 commissioning on Chestnut Street, $1,320. The final two invoices are the UTS July materials testing on Chestnut Street for $190. And the final UTS of Mass July materials testing for Fire Station number two for $365 dollars. The total for these invoices to come out of the miscellaneous budget is $19,219.18. Do I hear a second? Second. Thank you, Erwin. Any questions? I had one question. I only George. see one Milton Cat generator um, invoice, 261250. One came in last week, George, after I had sent this out. Okay, so it's not on the list. Correct. Same with the second <laughs> RFS. Uh, there was two RFS. Uh, it's Frost Shumway, right? Yep. Okay. Yeah, the generator rental you don't see is for July 12th through August 8th. Okay. And, and the other question relates to RFS. Um, how are they doing? Are they working in both buildings? Yes. And, and no major issues? No, we had we had some we had some issues with their uh, when we went to commission the fire station side, um, just in the in the timing and the length of time it took them to to do stuff. But we've uh, uh, put them back on schedule, and we'll see uh, when we do fire station two if uh, what we've uh, in, what we put in place for procedures uh, um, helps the uh, the workflow. Okay. Any other questions? Hearing none, seeing none coming to the vote. Richard? Aye. George? Aye. Lynn? Aye. Irwin? Aye. Chief Condon? Aye. Chair is aye. Catherine, that's all I see on this list. Ken, yes. anything else? No, no, that's that's, that's it. it. Okay. Any final questions for the team on the public safety? Excellent. Well, we will close that item down in record time. Thank you, George. <laughs> All Thank right. You,
Thank you, Chief Condon, and thank you to uh, Miles and uh, the rest of the team, TBA. Okay. Thanks. Um, with that, we will move to the uh, other business. There is one item that Erwin wanted to bring up. Um, Erwin, I'll let you set the stage for that. Uh, the item has to do with the senior center and uh, actually connects back to when funds were being raised uh, for the senior center building. And there was a effort, I think they were called Friends of the uh, Council on Aging. Uh, they raised over $600,000. $600, I don't have the exact number. Uh, fortunately, what was budgeted for the project uh, was enough to complete the project. And I know we sort of had some discussions and I have had discussions that it seems like maintenance would be a good use of that funds going forward. Uh, I don't know where that money is or who's managing it, but I sent uh, Stuart, I sent you a picture of the paneling. I mentioned this, I think about a year ago, the paneling of the shading wood panels by the windows is uh, seriously delaminate, delaminating. And uh, I've been using the senior center, the fitness room, which is great. And uh, I noticed that they're replacing the floor in the uh, main room. And I was just curious, was that within the expected useful life of the floor? So there's really a number of questions I'm trying to bring up. Uh, I guess the main question is, what is the status of that money that was raised? Uh, is it being used for maintenance? Why aren't the uh, panels being addressed? And was the floor, is that going to be an expense by the town? Or is that going to somehow come out of an expenditure from this uh, fund? So uh, I apologize for all those intermingled questions, but it really connects back to that fundraising effort. Well, I, I, I have a comment. George? Uh, I asked that question of one of the members of the, of the board on the Council on Aging. And uh, I, I think I was gently told none of my business, but I, I didn't really, that wasn't really mentioned, it was just avoided. In other words, they didn't want to tell me what the status was because that's their business and not PBBC's business. So I think in order to get the answer to that question, I think we should probably go to the town manager and ask her to get us an answer rather than so I wasn't going to push anything. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't formally request it. I simply went through one of the members and I didn't get an answer and didn't get an answer and didn't get an answer. So I kept pushing and basically I got some pushback um, and I don't think they wanted to answer to me. So um, even though nothing was formally sent, they didn't send me a note saying, you know, none of your business or but it was just one of those uh, things where you feel it. <laughs> I don't know if you know that feeling, but uh, so I think it's probably a good idea to uh, simply go to Kate and ask her the question because I think they do have a budget. I don't know how much it is. And, uh, and during uh, 2020, I don't think they had much going on there. Um, everything was done uh, remotely, but I think some people were getting paid to do those remote sessions. So I'm not understanding your question, Erwin. Are you asking if there's a warranty issue in place that needs to be identified, or are you asking who's in charge of the funds that were raised? And I, supposed to be allocated in a certain way or are they just being used for programming and whatever the heck they want yeah like i said there's a number of intermingled questions uh, the main question is just sort of curiosity and sort of expectations 
this money was raised to support the project if needed right. to buy things like computers turns out it wasn't needed so i'm sure many people have contributed contributed to that so i think as a contributor we have a right to know okay we we contributed to this fund who's managing it what is it being used for and then secondarily um this this seems to be a maintenance issue um and i i can show the photograph, but if you've been to the senior center, you can see how seriously delaminated the, those wood panels are and nothing's been, nothing's being done. So I'm curious why there isn't any attention to that. And then the third part is the floor. I'm just curious, uh, I doubt there's a warranty. I'm just curious if this is something that would be expected after, what was the senior center about nine or 10 years old now? Oh You're God. right there. Which, uh, Irvin, which floor is being... Uh, when you, the main floor, when you walk in sort of opposite the desk, so the, 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 main, the main function room, yeah. multi-purpose room, I guess. I, I'm, I'm surprised the tile is being replaced uh, or repaired or whatever. The whole thing is being, uh, was torn out and is being... It was it a... Uh, it was some kind of, I heard second, I heard just from listening to conversations that there was some warping in one area and they felt that they could not just fix the area, they had to replace the entire floor. And this is just hearsay, so I don't have any details about it. Well, for both of these projects probably should come under building maintenance department. Mm -hmm. We probably can ask them if they're involved. I would assume they'd be involved and not just senior center and council on aging. Yeah, Would they, that be a Keras question? No, they is they are. Uh, I'm sure they are involved. Uh, the I can speak to the sunshades. Um, the the uh, finish on the sunshades uh, has been delaminating for a while, uh, um, and that was identified oh, two or three years ago, uh, I got involved to the extent of uh, going back to BHNA and asking Joel um, or pointing out the issue. Um, obviously, those, that lamination required maintenance which wasn't being done, which is one reason for the condition that we see there. Um, Joel realized that, you know, in hindsight, that maybe that wasn't the best finish uh, for that product and has offered to, uh, to put a spec together that would essentially replace those um, sun shades, particularly in the back where uh, it, the failure is pretty significant. Um, that information was given back to building maintenance, um, but I haven't gotten any further information. In fact, Joel asked where that, that, uh, that issue was. And uh, at the time, and I went back and, and asked building maintenance and they, they said they weren't, uh, they had other things right now that were occupying their uh, attention. So that's all I can offer. Mr. Chairman, I, um, looking at the uh, warrant for the uh, last year's special town meeting, the May uh, special town meeting, um, there was a million dollar appropriation for public facilities maintenance program. And um, the um, flooring at the senior center is not referenced in the commentary. So I just wanted to note that. I mean, it, I guess the question I have from, from a PVC standpoint is, is there much we can do about this? Is this really in our peer view because this is a closed project um, and we're not contributing to anything, but is there something we need to, I think the only thing we may want to discuss is the consequence of what's happening is 
a impact to future projects and decisions we make relative to materials and to the architects and the construction agents that have put this together. That's where I think we do have potentially a discussion topic. I don't think it's a long discussion, but it's something we need to notch in our, uh, I don't know, tool bag of just uh, things going forward. Well, it's another issue too, Stuart. It's the same old issue, which is if maintenance Boundary. was not done on this item, what are the things on these buildings that we've built that were in perfect condition when we turned them over? What other maintenance issues also haven't been done? And do we think that... It... That's part of our responsibility to push that envelope. It's, it's kind of like, it's not really our responsibility to make it happen. But when you build a building and turn it over in excellent condition, in new condition, and people aren't doing the appropriate maintenance, it's, it's time for us to stand up and jump up and down and start screaming. But do we have any level of um, ability right now to really validate whether it is a town maintenance issue or not? Well, Steve mentioned that there should have been maintenance on these sunscreens. I don't know about the tiles. But they're both good questions, I think, from the perspective of building a building. Those are two issues that are coming back to us in, in this regard, that uh, is there something that was done wrong in the building of that? Uh, why is there warping taking place even 10 years out? I mean, tile floors like this should last longer than that. And, uh, and what's the issue with the sunshades in terms of improperly uh, maintaining them? Is there something that we need to know about that uh, to make sure that if we ever do use sunshades like this again, we don't run into this problem? I think it's a, it's a wood floor, isn't it, Arwen, that's in that room? It's a laminate, right? Wood laminate? I heard someone talking, uh, I can't remember what the material was originally, but what they're putting in, uh, I heard someone say it looks just like wood, it's easy to maintain. But I, again, I was just, this is just hearsay, I didn't speak to anyone directly. I do know that they're, they've removed the old floor and they're putting down some adhesive and they're probably getting close to uh, putting a new floor in. And just to follow up on George, George's point, it's almost like it's sort of like a feedback loop that we, if we make the buildings, we would like to know just from a sense of having done that, uh, are they being are they being maintained properly? And also to inform us, as George said, on on future uh, projects that maybe we would look at materials that ordinarily we would have selected, maybe would now look at an alternative. So uh, I'm what's not your, sure. What's, yes, your purview, what's your purview to Stewart's point? I mean, does this committee have oversight of building maintenance? I mean, can you call the building, the head of building this, maintenance into a conversation and say, we'd like an update on where you're having failures or need maintenance? Hank? I don't think we have uh, oversight over them. Yeah, yeah, we, we, don't have, we don't have oversight. Um, we used to occupy the same office space with the building maintenance department. They've now um, uh, moved upstairs. Um, but Steve uh, Gentile is our link. And we started doing monthly meetings, coordination meetings between the two departments, particularly related to uh, focusing now on the transition from construction to building maintenance on the um, police fire and fire station number two. We are trying to um, push um, procedures that uh, MSBA is advocating um, within these various systems. Um, and the, um, there was a transition within the last three years of the director of that department. And I think that uh, Steve Gentile can correct me if I'm wrong, but they are updating their software to try to be more comprehensive in their maintenance programs. 
um, using school do to um, both they have an outside consultant loading all the data into school do and finally requiring both in-house and consultants to sign off when something is complete and to actually make reports which was not happening previously so i think it's um getting there but it's by no means complete um and they have been staffing up um there's now an assistant director who is uh taking a lot of the work and steve gentile has been helping out immensely with the mechanical systems at the schools particularly through covid um so they are transitioning but clearly they're um they're gaps yeah, I was actually at the senior center, I think yesterday, and the floor is vinyl, the new floor is vinyl, and it's basically completed at this point, because um, you have to kind of cut through there. We were changing out the Mitsubishi in the server room, um, it needed refrigerant and that type of thing, but the thing, and I understand, I'm very sympathetic to what everyone's saying is because those panels are very noticeable when you approach the rear of the building, and it's hard to not say what's going on here from any point of view, particularly from an architectural point of view. And then you look at the actual panel on the building and you might say, this is, look at it as a project because there's so many screws that attach the, um, the louver, the panels to the wall. You could, you'd have to think about, do, does the whole bracket come off or do you take out all the screws that hold the wood panels? And then if you maintain them, is that a good use of money if we can't maintain them? Should we think of a new design solution that does the same. Would you use a composite, uh, some kind of uh, vinyl? But then you say well, the sun would melt the um, the polyester material. So um, I think it goes to the core of design and construction. Like, what's a good product? Uh, what's a good design solution for that building? Perhaps that wood wasn't the best or original thing, but you just keep maintaining that over time, and you could think of it as a new project. Well, what did Joel specify, Steve? Uh, Joel, Joel understood the problem, and we were specifying a um, some kind of a composite to replace it. It was obviously a bad choice, um, but I think that was the uh, because it did require significant maintenance. It was something that uh, perhaps, you know, in retrospect, we should have uh, had a different product there. All right, um, Stuart, if you, if you don't mind, I'd like to take about two minutes to just uh, update Lynn on um, what, our, what I perceive our role to be in this whole process and how we got to this point. Sure. Um, Go ahead, George. The, um, the issue has always been that um, when we design and construct these buildings, we're putting in a tremendous amount of capital to build a new building. And over the years, the building maintenance department, which is responsible for updating and maintaining the buildings, uh, really has never been uh, up until recently. And I'm, I'm not convinced we're there yet, but uh, we're, we're, we're moving in the right direction. They've really never been on top of uh, all the issues uh, regarding maintenance. And so we've had some major guffaws, I call them, uh, over the years where things were not maintained properly and it cost the town a bundle of money. And, 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 it's, and it's a shame because you spend all this money on new projects and then three to five years later, if they're not doing the right maintenance, uh, you might have to spend a, a bundle of money to to correct issues that were caused because of poor maintenance. And so, uh, frankly, I've personally been jumping up and down and, and you know, yelling at whoever wants to listen that we've got to have a stronger building maintenance department that has the capability both internally and by hiring external uh, support personnel and support companies to be able to do this maintenance so that you maintain what you've built rather than let it go to, uh, to rot quickly. Um, and frankly, um, we're, we're on our way. I think we're finally 
as a town recognizing that we need to spend more money and have more of the right people there that can make those decisions as to whether or not to add staff. I'm not totally in favor of adding too many staff any more than uh, having the right staff to be able to make decisions to bring in outside uh, support personnel rather than have everybody on staff uh, because there's a real cost to the town when you have full-time people on staff too. So uh, I think there, it's kind of a, a, a catch-up type of thing where they're trying to catch up with what their responsibilities are. I think their intentions at this point seem much stronger than they were in the past. Um, but we've, we've, as a town, we've suffered through paying a fair amount of money uh, to uh, uh, correct problems that were uh, laid at our feet because of poor maintenance. That's, that's my comment. And I think it's pretty accurate. Uh, but we're, we're, we're moving forward. So it's one of these things where you got to be a little careful how you throw criticism around. But I think the intent, if you talk to the finance committee or the select board, you won't find anybody against uh, making sure that we do the right maintenance to maintain the buildings that we've spent millions and millions of dollars building. So. And, and what we've done, Lynn, is we have spurred, it was probably a year and a half ago, just as, well, actually probably a year ago where COVID was just picking up and we actually tried to uh, initiate a level of dialogue with the maintenance team. Um, and of course, with COVID, it just was not the topic to, to address this particular where, how do we deal with transition? But subsequently in the last, um, I don't know, Steve Popper, if I'm correct, a month ago, we had some conversation with um, Karis as well as- um, Barry. Say again, Barry. Barry DeLong, yeah. Yeah, and, and the next step is that Barry was going to provide, a, and he's usually in these, in these meetings, is he's gonna provide a bit of a, I don't know, a framework, I guess, for transition um, to where we can work a level of, of dialogue as well as can we, what I call shift left, can we start to get maintenance up in the design process um, to participate and understand the kind of dynamics and requirements as the building gets built and moved into transition into their hands, what are the things that they need to start thinking about from a building maintenance, whether it's programmatic from an HVAC perspective, whether it is from a security system, what are the kind of requirements that they would be meeting? So I think we're making some progress, a bit slow, but I do believe with respect to COVID, with respect to funding that we have within the town um, and the priorities we have in the town, we do have, I'm gonna call it headwinds, but we are trying to work through it. So. Um, I think the meeting a month ago was was very valuable, and I, and I think we'll spur another one or a follow up. I'm hoping, I think October or November, if I recollect part of the conversation with Barry. Um, but you know, George is right. I think we've delivered a lot of significant buildings. Um, we've had some issues come back that had to come into the hands of the PVC. That was voted by the town and asked by the uh, town manager to, for us to take and. For example, replace the chiller um, at the uh, high school. So there are items that come back into our purview and it's, it's not very comfortable for us since we built the buildings and delivered, I think high quality outcomes, but um, we're doing our best. And, and I think we should continue as a, as a committee um, to push and try and help the town be aware of um, that it's not necessarily a cost. Yes, it is a cost, but these buildings are of extreme value and we can minimize the overall long-term cost if we start to, to maintain um, and take on some better uh, uh, processes, for lack of a better word, uh, when these get transitioned. So with I, that- I have one, ahead, one question or comment uh, on top of that. Um, if not us, who? In other words, who's looking at these buildings that really understands the buildings 
and what was done at the beginning and what needs to be done to keep them up to date on an ongoing basis. If it isn't us, who is it? It's nobody. There's nobody looking at this that can in fact make that uh, technical judgment of what's being done or not being done. And so I kind of look at it that way is um, every member of this committee is a taxpayer in the town of Needham. And when I see my tax dollars being uh, uh, wasted, I get very upset. And so because we are knowledgeable, I think it's up to us and, and, we're, and we have the vision generally, uh, it's up to us to say, look, this isn't acceptable from the town's perspective. And, um, and so uh, that's, that's my commentary on that. It's really not our responsibility, but in a way it is. Okay, great. Now I can get, so off, now I can get off my soapbox. So I think with the topic that Erwin brought up about the senior center, is it fair to say that there's, or I should say I've interpreted two things and if somebody wants to put a motion on the floor, we can, um, that we maybe ask Steve Gentile to take this concern back into the building maintenance with your work, Steve, and just let the group know, Karis and folks, that, that the PVC has brought up this issue on um, the concern. Um, and then maybe the second part here is just for us to notch within our uh, work moving forward that some of these materials may be in question if we were to do use them in a different format or a different building. Um, or Steve Popper is, is, should we wait until we hear back? I think you're asking Joel. Well, I, I don't think Steve should be the person to deliver that message. Uh, he works directly for them. Um, we do have a meeting scheduled with the uh, building maintenance on Thursday and certainly I'll, I'll bring up this topic, but I will not, I think it's up to incumbent on the committee. If you wanna pursue the issue of, you know, money and where it's been, that's somebody else's bailiwick as far as I'm concerned. It's not my department's bailiwick. Uh, yeah, I was I was asking Steve. I think just if, if Steve Gentile would just you know carry that he heard from PVC. I'm asking for a formal uh, thing. I think you're right. So I probably should write a note um, with with the dialogue of the discussion here and maybe pass it to Karis and just let her know. Yeah, I like I said, I I'm certainly going to let Karis know that we've had this discussion here, um, but I think there's two issues on the floor. One is the um, follow-up of maintenance on the deliverables that uh, come out of the committee uh, overview or oversight. Um, and I, I think we are making some progress there. Um, uh, you know, we've talked about it at the last meeting where Karis and and Barry were present and Barry has uh, made a commitment to take a much more active role in the, uh, in the specification process, the review of the specifications. And perhaps we would have caught this issue with regard to the sunshades. I don't know about the, the vinyl floor. I have no knowledge about that. And so I don't wanna speak. Well I, I think the only thing I'm concerned about is I'd like to know what the issue was with the flooring and, and what they think caused it. Because if, for example, there was a poor material that was used, uh, then I think that's important that we know that so that it isn't used again, especially if it was just a poor choice of material. Same with the sunshades. I, uh, I think uh, that's absolute feedback that should come back to the committee, and if it wasn't so obvious, 
uh, that you can see it when you park your car there. I, I'm not sure it would ever have a way to come back to the committee, but I think it's important that it get fed back to the committee. So whenever there's maintenance issues in any one of the buildings that we've built, I'd like to hear about that maintenance issue and what they think might have been the cause as it relates to how we built the building. That's really important feedback for us to get. Okay, thank you, George. Erwin? So in, reg in regard to the, the flooring, I think, you know, I'd like to know why did they, what was the problem? What do they think caused it? What, what material was used uh, and, uh, and, uh, and what material did they decide to replace it with? And to me, that's really important to know that. Erwin? And just two quick comments to follow up on what George said. I, I think the way to frame it is after we build the building, it would be helpful for the PBC to know of any issues with the buildings that come up. Sort of again, it's a feedback loop to help inform us about what we might be doing differently. So part exactly. of it is that, the other is just a curiosity factor of uh, why, why did it fail and who made the decision that it failed. And um, so that, I think framing it as just looking for a feedback mechanism might be the way to do it. My second point, getting back to that fund, I think we said that that might be something that Kate can uh, shed some light on. And that has, that's really not a PBBC issue. I think I'm coming at it as a, as a citizen, although if it is available, it seems to me that would be a good use of it for maintenance of that building. So just shedding some light on that fund, I think would be useful. Okay, great. And is there any, any motions, any, any formal requests to close this topic? I'll, I'll reach out to Karis and I know Steve Popper, you're gonna do the same. I think just an informal question to Kate would be helpful to know because I've wondered the same thing and and Erwin has asked me on multiple occasions and I've tried to get a response and really didn't get much in the way of follow-up. Yeah, I think I remember you telling me about your experience, George. Yeah, so. Okay. All right. Okay. Yes, Hank. Um, if that piece of business is closed. I think it'd be helpful to do a quick update on the solar at Jack, Jack Cogswell. And we have yeah. yep. PSS for uh, Beacon Integrated Solutions that I'd like to get approval on. Okay, so I, I do have that on the list here. I have, I just got a couple things before. So I got the terms, the JCB, and then I don't know if the PSS we could do, but we could look at it. Um, before we go to the Jack Cogswell, um, I just want to let everybody know that, and I think I did this last time, terms were voted in on the nominating committee. Um, so now, as I mentioned, I think two meetings ago, each of our terms, we've got blocks. You will need to go to town hall, I guess, to get sworn in, I think. I don't think under circumstances that we can do it via Zoom, I don't think. Um, but you'll just wait for the note from um, Teddy, um, town clerk's office, um, about your term and, and um, the steps you need to take just to get sworn back in. And this correlates back to, I believe it's two meetings ago where I just labeled out the terms for everybody. Okay. Um, and if there's any questions, feel free to reach out to me directly um, on that topic. Um, I did wanna do the, JC, the, the Jack Cogswell um, update. And Hank, if you're looking to provide an update from the conversation, you wanna take that and then we can do the PSS if we can. Okay, well, uh, we gave a, a brief presentation to um, chair's meeting regarding proceeding, trying to gain consensus to proceed with the solar uh, installation at the Jack Cogswell building. Um, Lynn, for your benefit, um, the installation there would enable, uh, it would actually exceed the amount of power that's used by the building, but it would in fact, cover all of the, um, through net metering, um, would offset the power that's used by all of the other uh, buildings on the RTS and then some. 
Um, the project is currently about $2.2 million under budget, but the uh, committee did not want to proceed with that unless there is consensus uh, within the town to, to spend that money on the building. Um, the guesstimate or the estimate was in the half million dollar range for that installation plus soft costs. Um, Just a comment, solar was never a part of the original design, uh, but we felt it would be a great idea as we were going through the project to consider it for that building. Um, that, that's just one other piece of information. I think it's important. It, it wasn't part of the original design. But well, we had solar design. readiness, I think was George when we talked about it. Right? Solar readiness was, yeah. but, but the installation of solar was not other than having it solar ready from a um, yeah, so just point to of view. Bring clarification is that as a committee, very much like Sunita Williams, when we are trying to strive for solar ready, but given the size of the investment here um, and being somewhat of a gray area, uh, it was important as Hank said that for us to get consensus outside um, so we are not perceived as taking liberty with excess funds outside of the scope. Um, I think we do, we could make the choice for the, for the, the intent and spirit of it, but I think we're, we do have the responsibility to carefully look at it and reach the consensus. Thank you. Um, and I can share with the committee the slides that uh, Beth Greenblatt of Beacon Integrated Solutions prepared for that discussion. Uh, she went through uh, three different scenarios, the best case, worst case, and a conservative case, and what the payback period or payback amounts would be uh, with that installation. Um, we think they would be beneficial, but ultimately we can't tell until we go out to bid. Um, we have already applied for and gotten a designation as a SMART project, uh, S-M-A-R-T, and that would allow for um, certain reimbursements depending upon the amount of, maybe you're familiar with that. Um, and so those are factored into that equation. Um, Kate was going to look into whether any um, American Rescue Plan Act funds, grant funds could be used. My initial read from Weston and Sampson is that it would not cover that except if it were <coughs> related to um, water or sewer um, equipment or buildings, but we'll continue to explore that obviously. Um, and then the other question they, they asked and, and um, Beth will prepare another slide as to what, what would, if we didn't use borrowed funds but used uh, cash, what would the payback period be? And that's in the 10 to 12 year range. Um, and the SMART payments would be uh, over 25 years. Um, so I can share the rest of those details if you're interested. The next step would be a meeting with FinCom, which is now scheduled for um, their early September meeting. I think it's September 8th to discuss this issue. September 9th, yes. I would just, I would just emphasize or just bring a, a summary to this, Hank, if I may. The, um, the FinCom is the next step to try and financial. So I thought we had 2.5 million left in the budget. Um, but if we have 2.2, regardless, it's about a $500,000 investment estimated with a, with a 20, was it 18 or 20 year payback, um, depending on the scenario that comes out. I think the interesting questions that came in from uh, Marianne Cooley, which was the carbon footprint um, savings, because I think that there is some certainly um, political perspectives when you start to look at the world and the UN and climate change, uh, the direction Needham wants to take, the payback is not as great um, in some respects. Uh, and, and the consternation is the opportunity cost of these funds, being, even though there's funds in this project. And it really came with the, the lower cost of construction, it should be funded, but opportunity cost comes into play. And I think Finance Committee is going to be a bit of a challenge 
Um, but also, I think, Hank, the, the other interesting point was the, um, the RTS, what we did with the RTS and the estimation of the, of the returns there, there's actually significantly more returns. So in fact, we think, <laughs> I would like to go that far, is if we're saving two hundred fifty to five hundred thousand dollars, meaning we're getting more money in from the RTS thing, we've already funded the Jack Cogswell Solar. But I don't want to go into the debate, folks. That's not what I'm trying to, to to suggest. I just thought there's some interesting tidbits to come in here. Also, um, Matt Borelli, and and I hope I'm not stepping out of line by bringing names up specifically, but I think it was a conversation that all was was healthy, and there's no bias here, but. As, as the select board chair and of this meeting that we had was very uh, interested in, and was recommending that we go to the town meeting. So as much as we'll go to fin FinCom to get their sense, there is consensus that they wanna go to town meeting. So in October, if they can get it onto the warrant and, and get a sense of what the town would feel about spending this money, and I'm sure the FinCom would do their piece of opportunity costs, select board would do their whatever. Um, the most important thing I think for us as a committee and where we stand is that we are hedging our bets by spending some small, what I consider, and I think the committee is considered small money to keep this process moving. If town meetings out in October, I think the only commitment that we might have to hedge our bets, which would be lost funds, is about eight to nine thousand dollars to uh, fund the uh, agreement, which would be half, and then we'd have to pay the other half um, down the road. We can stop the process at any point in time, but I think as a committee, what's important to know where these meetings stand, going to the FinCom and then potentially town meeting. Right now, as a committee, we're just looking at probably eight to nine thousand out of that two point two, approximately, Hank. Uh, remaining budget that we would put forth to this to hopefully the town approves. We're keeping things moving. Worst case, town says, nope, all we're doing is sinking eight to nine in um, uh, further um, to do that. So I think the real key is that September uh, 9th or at September 8th meeting with FinCom, and we'll go from there. Could I have Any a comment? questions? I have a comment. George? Um, and I think the rest of the committee has heard me say this, but I wanted to mention it to Lynn. This is another one of those areas where um, we have the responsibility as a committee uh, to do, for example, the, the best job we can in terms of um, energy cost savings um, within a, a reasonable uh, amount uh, to do the best that we can as we design these new buildings. Uh, Needham does not have any written statement about what uh, is expected regarding renewable energy. Uh, I think the general uh, uh, consensus of the building committee is that uh, we ought to look at solar as a part of just about every project that we, we do. And, um, and that's part of the reason we looked at the Jack Cogswell's building uh, as, uh, as a, uh, a potential source uh, for solar, um, and if and if we don't do it, it's not going to get done, uh, because uh, I think the town has never made a decision regarding uh, what its its uh, feelings are regarding renewable energy. I I happen to believe that that's very um, uh, uh, inappropriate. I think the town should have already made some decisions regarding that. Um, but we haven't, other towns have, and, uh, and they're moving forward. Um, we have not really uh, uh, done that as a town. Uh, so what we're doing is, once again, we're pushing the envelope and saying, we really believe this is a good opportunity to put solar on the roof of this building, uh, especially if you do some forward thinking and say, uh, 10 years from now, will the town have uh, all renewable energy automobiles uh, in, in their fleet. And if they do, uh, where are they going to get them uh, um, uh, renewed? Are we gonna have to build a facility to do that? Or can we do that as a part of the Cogswell building and, and use the solar to help us uh, uh, charge the vehicles uh, in the future? Now, I know that's fu future 
thinking, but that's the kind of thinking that we were doing as we discussed this. And I think we still need to be the ones that push this because there's nobody else that's going to push it except there's a Green Needham committee and they can try to push it, but they're not official either. Um, so I think going to town meeting is a great idea because frankly, I think it will finally get some discussion on the floor of town meeting where I think there's a strong sense that we ought to be doing more in the area of renewable energy as we think about buildings for the future. So I think it's a great idea to put it before the town and let them make that decision because I don't think you're gonna get any cooperation from FinCom in that regard right now, especially. Um, but anyway, so, so we're kind of pushing this even though it's not really our job, but if we don't, who does? I, I keep saying that. And so I think it's important for us to kind of push this whole process. It's like adding more insulation in the building than you think it absolutely needs as a minimum. We, we, we've been doing that for years is to try to design the best and most energy efficient structures that we can. And we haven't had anybody say to, say to us, you shouldn't be doing that because it costs extra money to do that. We do it because we know that it's the right thing to do. And so I think that's where we are with solar as well. Okay. Anyway. Thank you, George. Um, any other final comments um, before we close the Cogswell topic down? Mr. Chairman. And, uh, and um, yeah, hold, sorry. One thing before I forget, apologize, Henry, Hank, um, could you send out that material to, I know you were asking, but I think let's send that out, send out the deck. Um, I should have done that before. People will have that as a reference point. Richard? Um, sure. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I just uh, want to um, ask a, um, a question of, um, of the uh, committee, and that is uh, in regard to the um, status of the uh, facilities financial financing um, review that was going to be taking place over the summer. I happen to see in the um, selectmen's meeting packet, select board's meeting packet, that um, in the draft uh, warrant for uh, October special town meeting. Uh, Emory Grover is listed as a uh, design funds article. Now it could be a placeholder, but I was wondering if anyone had an update as to what uh, where things stand. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, Go ahead. You want to? Who, who wants to do it? I can do Go it. Go ahead, George. Um, essentially, we're we're still meeting on about a once a month basis. I think um, uh, the the town finance uh, or what's his name. Uh, Dave Davis. Dave, Dave Davison uh, did a great job of putting together uh, what the um, what the limitations might be for us raising funds to do this, um, and and he mentioned that you know we would go over the the three percent and the thirteen percent uh, to a small amount, but we've done that before, um, and and essentially uh, I I got the conclusion is that we could fund a building like the. Uh, the um, uh, uh, school administration building. Um, and, and I think that's becoming uh, almost general consensus, even though FinCom hasn't really um, got on board yet. Um, the other issue is the school projects. I think there are a number of people uh, from FinCom that want to see uh, uh, every level of detail planned out uh, in detail that would take us probably a year to do that. Uh, in the meantime, you wouldn't be doing some things that I think you should be doing with the schools. So uh, we're still in the process of deciding what the scope of the work should be. But I think we're almost at the point, um, and maybe after my soapbox discussion last week at our meeting, which was uh, um, there, isn't a, there isn't a department in this town uh, that has conditions like the school administration building. And um, mm -hmm. we would, we, we would, we're doing the wrong thing by not moving that building forward. Uh, in any event, I think the intent is to put that on the, on the warrant and, and then come up with a plan for how much it's going to cost and who's going to pay for it. Thank My you. interpretation of the uh, facilities working group, um, as George said, we've been meeting on, on a, I'm going to say every two weeks. I think it's an extremely difficult problem given the finances. Um, and I think that Dave Davison showed that we would go across the threshold 
I think it would be a narrow window, a couple of years, not like five, 10 years. However, I, there is, and I, I think it may have been withdrawn, is there was going to be a request to the PVC to research three other scenarios, take a variation of, of a school master plan that we had did and presented um, to, to go through a few of those. Hank, did you have a clarification? Uh, yes, we'll be meeting with FinCom on Wednesday, tomorrow night. Yeah. Uh, and there's a reserve fund transfer request for uh, $75,000 so that uh, Doran Whittier can continue uh, looking at options to spread out Mitchell and Pollard projects over a longer period of time so that we don't have the peaks in borrowing. Um, there are two other projects. One has been mentioned, the Emory Grover, but there's also a DPW building in the midst. And those are the four projects that Dave Davison looked at in terms of his long-term planning. Yeah, but but the but the, the the point is that that based on tomorrow, if there is an approval for the transfer, there most likely will be uh, some oversight from us to ensure um, that the request of I thought it was three scenarios um, to uh, to deliver. So Dorn Wardier would do that to this to the committee and help the school committee evaluate some variations, as Hank said. I'm kind of I'm kind of discouraged because we've just been researching this thing and I hear nothing from the facilities working group and some of the members of FinCom asking for more studies and I think this town has gone way and above and, and beyond it's it's not going to change the problem and it ain't going to change the money per se um, but we'll leave it to the experts it's just my own opinion I'm not going to press this committee of of, of making any, any, you'll make your own conclusions on the material you read, but it is overstudied. And, and as George said, I think George did a very nice job, if I may say so, um, is really asking when, when we would get some decisions um, because they deserve it. Those conditions that the school administration is living in and working in, it's just, a, thank goodness for COVID pushed some people home, but it's unbearable, but anyways. I think the point is that, that there's another meeting post this FinCom, um, and, and I would say that there's still a, a difficult problem to grapple with, and that's the, the, the sizable money that's on the table. Thank you. So hopefully that gives you your answer, Richard. Yep. Um, okay, uh, that's that. Now, do you, Hank? Um, the, uh, we have a, a proposal from Beacon Integrated Solutions. A PSS. I did not just, we just got it in uh, this afternoon, but we do need to continue Beth Greenblatt services. Um, and the PSS is for $5,000. If the project gets stopped, uh, we would liquidate any balance that's remaining. Uh, Lynn, she is a specialist consultant on energy. I don't know if you're familiar with uh, yep. Beth. Um, and has been instrumental not only on this project, but also on the RTS. It's called Mound Solar X. It's currently owned by Tesla. Um, and very helpful to me and to Steve and the committee in terms of understanding the finance, the, the um, cost benefit of these projects. So Hank, you're putting forth a, a $5,000 uh, consultant fee, which would be, this is related to the Jack Cogswell solar. So this would be coming out of the current budget and associated to the, the solar, uh, uh, research. Um, and that Hank would be separate from the eight to 9,000 that we referred to on the timeline, correct? Correct. There would be the, 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 the first payment to the interconnection services for the interconnection services agreement, first payment to Eversource would be just under 5,000, and that's due uh, before October 12th. Right. So that consultant fee and the interconnection fee gets us to that eight to 9,000, 10,000 total that we would invest. Um, which would be a sunk cost if, if it gets lost, but it would keep us moving. It's hedging our bets. 
So let's right. let's make sure we stay focused. That's so on the table is putting forth the the invoice for the P, the PSS for uh, Beth relative to the JCB solar. I'd like to recommend approval of that. Okay. Do I hear a second? Second. Thank you. Uh, any questions? Coming to the vote, Richard. Aye. George. Aye. Lynn. Aye. Erwin. Aye. Chair is aye. Okay, great. Can, can I ask a that, Hank? Can, can, can I ask a question? Actually, um, uh, the 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 Hank, uh, I can probably talk to you offline about this, but the fact is, when is the EverSource um, payment due? And it. It's, it's due before the 12th of October. So, so you're not asking, for, you'll ask for that at another PPBC meeting? We, we can, I don't know that we need to vote that. Um, okay. But if we do, um, uh, I can get the exact number. I believe it's $4,718. Okay. And it's due 120 business days after the signed agreement, and that would be October 12th. And I, I, since, I think since we should vote it. Should vote it, okay. We should, but do vote we need to vote September. it tonight? Oh, sorry, folks. No, in, in September. Tonight. Yeah, I, I think we should get the right number and put it on the agenda for the next meeting. Because I think we're gonna have to vote for the approval I'm sorry for this the signing of the interconnection and then the funding of it, correct? Uh, well, it's already been signed by the manager. Okay, great. <clears throat> okay, so we'll do that the uh, next meeting for that one. Okay. Um, any other? I think that concludes the other business. Unless there's anything else on the on the uh, table or anybody's. Erwin, you got your hand up. No, just resting my chin. I see uh, there's a hand up there. I like that. It's a white hand over your forehead. <laughs> no, it's a reflection on my forehead. I'm, I'm assuming we don't, I'm assuming we're planning on meeting the first meeting in uh, September, second week. Yeah, the, the 13th. Are we, Steve, on the meetings on the 30th? And uh, I would propose that uh, at the moment, we don't have anything that I see as uh, pressing for the meeting on the 30th. So I would um, assume, and I will let everybody know for sure that we will skip that meeting and then proceed to the first meeting in uh, September. That's on this, our schedule. Which is the 13th of September. Good. Okay. And it, go ahead, Hank. Uh, Stuart, I'll, I'll forward the uh, presentation that was given uh, to the chairs, but I'll also forward an update that uh, regarding the Emory Grover building that um, Dan Gutekantz put together as frequently asked questions related to EG. Um, I think it's very informative of the status of the building. You all are very familiar with it with the building and its efficiencies. Um, hopefully um, this will just be uh, added information. And there is a tour that he's offering to members of the finance committee. Um, and if anyone hasn't been through that building and wants to go through the building, I'm sure your presence would be welcomed. Uh, Hank, I uh, spoke to um, uh, select board chair, um, Matt Borelli, and mentioned to him that the two newest members of the, um, of the select board probably have not had a tour of that building. And uh, one of the two uh, declined to vote uh, in favor of doing work there because she didn't uh, feel she knew, you know, had enough information and she kind of postponed it to see um, uh, what was going to happen later. And I, I'm saying, I, I think part of that is that she doesn't know what the building is like inside. And so I suggested that he find a way to invite the two of them to get a tour. So if you're giving a tour, I would 
contact Matt Borelli and follow up on what he promised he would do by getting both of them involved in a tour of the building. Okay. If, if I need to do anything, let me know and I'll, I'll push him on it. He thought it was a good idea. Okay. Oh, we'll, we'll work through Kate on that one. That, that's fine. Okay. I'd mention, you can mention that uh, Matt Borelli felt it was a good idea as well. Okay, great. Okay, with that, if there is no more business, I don't see any hands up and nobody's jumping up and down. So welcome Lynn to your and, and conclusion of your first meeting and uh, have a great week everybody. And we'll, we'll be back at the table on the 13th of September, unless different, but we'll wait for Steve to give us a final on whether the 30th will be a meeting or not. Okay. And Stuart, the score is two to nothing Yankees. George, I know I'm probably gonna lose the bet. <laughs> did, anyone, did anyone ever warn you that sometimes people tape games? Oh, is that right? <laughs> well, if you, if you tape this game this afternoon, you'd be very disappointed when you watch it. No, but, actually, I'm very happy I did watch it. All right, Spoiler so I'm going to call conclusion to this meeting, and I'll let everybody else banter about the Red Sox. All right, thanks, everybody. Thanks. See you all later. Welcome aboard, Lynn. Thank you.